Hello, I'll continue the discussion, introduction and classification of turbo machines. Contents of the lectures are application of gas turbines. Here I'll discuss on turbojet, turbofan and turboprop engine. I've also cited different examples illustrating constructions of different machines. I'll start from high bypass turbofan engine, then multi-stage compressor, centrifugal compressor, Kaplan turbine, Francis turbine, and Pinton wheel. I'll initiate the discussion with applications of gas turbines. Gas turbines are used in stationary power generation unit and jet engines. The Brayton cycle is the operating cycle for a gas turbine. And the closed cycle is used for power generation unit, while open cycle is used for jet engines. Let me discuss further. I have I have uh, discussed here the schematic of a open cycle where. This is the compressors and combustion chamber and the turbines. So air is sucked by the compressor and it compresses air and then pushed to the combustion chamber where combustion occurs at constant pressure and then it is being expanded in turbine producing work output and that work output is sufficient to run the compressors and the rest part of the compressed air is exhaust through a nozzle to produce jet in case of a jet engine or in case of a power plant or power generation unit it is fully expanded in the turbine and the part of the energy produced is ex extracted to run the compressor and the remaining part is used to run the generator to produce power. This Breton cycles you have gone through in your thermodynamic classes. Still, I have shown here the TS diagram in the later part of the course. I'll tell you how we enhance the efficiency of the cycles and the power output. Here I have shown in TS diagram, one, two is a ideal compression process and one two dash is the actual compressions considering some isentropic efficiency of the compressions. Similarly, T4 is the ideal expansion and T dash four dash is the actual expansions. And two dash T dash is equal to the combustion process occurring in the combustion chamber. And if you calculate the efficiency of the cycle, then it can be expressed that eta is equal to one minus 
1 over Rp to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma, where Rp is nothing but pressure ratio P2 by P1. So as the pressure ratio of the cycle is increased, its efficiency increases. However, for steam power plant, the ranking cycle closely describes the process found in thermal power plant, where a pump is used to compress water and high pressurized water is fed to the boiler while it is heated and steam is produced and that supersaturated steam is expanded by the turbine to produce the work output to run the generator and it is again condensed and that condensed water is again pumped to complete again again fed to the boiler to complete the cycle I have shown here in the TES diagram, temperature entropy diagram, where 1, 2 is the pump work, 2, 3 is the heat addition in the boiler, 3, 4 is the expansion process that occurs in turbine producing power output, and 4, 1 is the heat rejection by the condensers to complete the cycle. Now I'll discuss about jet engines, the turbojet, turbofan, and turboprop engines play a dominant role in aero industries. The modern trend of development of aero engine is raising its propulsive and thermal efficiency. Furthermore, the requirement of aero engines for civil aviation are fuel efficiency and low noise level, whereas the compact aircraft for defense application calls for high performance, fast speed, and extreme maneuvers. Thus, the requirement for civil application and that of the defense are completely different and thus the design would be different. Apart from aero engines, gas turbine as a propulsive device is used in ships, truck and trains. Let me explain now the jet engine with the help of some schematic diagram. So first I have discussed about the turbojet and turboprop engine. This is the schematic of turbojet. The turbojet sucks air from atmosphere and that air is compressed in a series of multi-stage compressors. And then the compressed air is pushed to the combustion chamber where combustion occurs and then high pressure and temperature. Air is partly expanded in a turbine and the product power produced by the turbine is sufficient enough to run the compression. And the remaining pressurized gas is expanded by a nozzle to produce thrust. A turbojet engine is used in defense application and it is characterized by its high propulsive thrust and speed. Now here is the turboprop engine which holds a propeller in front of the engines and it is characterized by its high propulsive efficiency and low specific fuel consumption. So here is again sucked 
by multi-stage compressor which compresses air combustions occur in the combustion chamber and the pressurized and high temperature gas is fully expanded in a turbine to produce power output and that power output would be sufficient to run the propeller and the compressors. Propeller rotates at slower speeds and the pressure difference between the propeller that is pressure rise in the propeller is pressure gradient that develop is relatively small which is sufficient enough to produce thrust. Now I'll come to the turbofan engine. Turbofan is a combination of turboprop and turbojet engine. So it's having a large font in front of the engine as you can see here and the air is divided into two streams. One stream is going outside the engine and other is, is passing through the series of compressors. And air being compressed by two stages, one is called high pressure stage and the low pressure stage. And similarly, the turbine. So, so what I like to tell you, in other words, that air is bypassed. So one half of the air is goes outside the engine, and other half is passing through the multi-stages compressors, and then pushed to combustion chamber, combustion soccer, and it's being ex extend, in being expanded in the turbine. Then also the two stage, one is called high pressure stage and the low pressure stage. Low pressure generally, the, the sap, low pressure sap is connected to the fan. And then the remaining part of the gas is expanded through the nozzle to produce thrust. So here, part of the thrust is come from the exhaust jet and part from the large fan. So that's why it's a combination of turboprop and turbo jet engine. What do we have got? The design innovation of high bypass turbofan engine is is huge considering the fact it enhances efficiency and it reduces noise level. Thus, a turbofan engine is characterized by its low specific fuel consumption and low noise level. By these three figures, I've explained the characteristics of turboprop, turbofan, and turbojet engines. Look, this is the propulsive efficiency versus speed. At low speed, turboprop is efficient, whereas turbojet engine is efficient at higher speed and turbofan lies between the turboprop and turbojet. This figure illustrates thrust versus speeds. At lower speed, turboprop gives maximum thrust, whereas turbojet performance is very poor. After certain speeds, Turboprop cannot be used because of its thrust decreases dramatically with speeds. So after a certain speed, turbojet is the only option and its thrust increases with the speed. 
and definitely turbo fan being a combination of turbo jet and turbo pop lie between the two. Here I have shown the altitude on the Mach number. You see turbo pop lies in the range of 0 0.3, 0 0.4, maximum 0.5 Mach number. After 0.6, turbo fan takes over and turbo fans generally fly at about a altitude of 10,000 meters, where turbo pop flies at an altitude of 5,000 meters. You see, turbo jets is active at a very high Mach number of Mach 2 and beyond. This is very efficient at this range. And turbojet flies at a altitude of 20,000 meter. So by this figure, you can appreciate the characteristics of three machines and how they are, when they are used particularly. When you fly at a lower speeds, particularly that lower craft, we use uh, turbo pop. And turbo fan are used generally for, for a large uh, aircraft carrying about more than 200 passengers. Further, I have stated here that in aero engines, you will find most sophisticated applications of turbo machines. And to illustrate further, I have taken a cut section of a high bypass turbo fan engine produced by Rolls-Royce. And the engine is designated by PW4000 fan engine. And it's characterized by fan diameter of 94 inch thrust 52,000 to 62,000 pound bypass ratio 4.8 to 5 overall pressure ratio is 27.5 to 32.3 there are some aircrafts which are powered by the engine and they are Boeing 747-400 and Airbus A300-610 so that you can appreciate the most modern aircraft is powered by the engine to explain the construction, you will find a large fan here. Please note that the fan is highly twisted. And there are series of multi-stage compressors. Started from low pressure stage to high pressure stage. And you can find out the annulus area also decreases because of the compression of air and then push to combustion chamber where combustion occur, and then highly compressed and high temperature gas is expanded in a turbine first in a high pressure turbine then a low pressure turbine you can appreciate how area annulus area and the blade height changes in, in low pressure turbine because of expansion of gas and the rest is expanded to a nozzle to produce thrust. So as I have told earlier, the thrust is produced here by the combination of the exhaust jet and the fan. 
And look, the low pressure turbine is connected to a sapt, and there is a coaxial sapt actually. This is the multi spool machines. And this, the sapt which connects the low pressure stage, low pressure turbine stage, is connected to the fan and the low pressure compressions and the high pressure turbine stage is connected to the high pressure compressions. So I trust you have appreciated the complications and you have appreciated how how the uh, function that the functionality of the engines and now I like to tell you this combustion chamber turbine compression and fan has to match and if time permit I'll explain you matching of all components and this engines hacks from hang from the wing so I have shown a picture just to tell you, you see this large engine hangs from the wing to produce the required thrust for the big craft. Here I have shown you a nine stage compression blade. Obviously, there will be a rotor followed by stator blades. And the orientation of rotor and stator blades are different I'll explain you later now you can find out this towards the NT the height of the blade and exit at height of the blade are different because of the compression of air and you have also appreciated that blades are out of uh, structures Let's take another example, which is the impaler for centrifugal compression. The context is completely different. This frontal part is called the eye of the impaler, and the air is being sucked axially, and then it is thrown out radially. and hope you have appreciated the construction of impaler here is completely different from the axial impalers and another picture i have shown for a built on wheel which is a primitive machines here a water jet is being produced by the nozzle and the water jet is deflected by the impaler passage by about 165 degree producing thrust and hope you have appreciated as the water is being deflected by the impaler the pressure remains constant that's why it's called an impulse turbine i have shown here a pictorial view of the kaplan turbine where water is collected by the diffuser and then pushed to the runner when it when it enters the runner water becomes axial and then it come out axially you can appreciate the pro oh, impaler looks like a propeller having very fewer blades of aerofoil constructions i have given you a, a just pictorial view of the impaler you appreciate it exactly like a propeller and you look here at the aerodynamic shape of the impaler highly twisted blades this is a francis turbine and you realize the flow this francis turbine is a mixed flow impaler and I have shown also the 
volute casing, water is collected by the volute casing, and then through the diffuser main, it pushed to the runner, where it's, it's, it's neither axial nor radial, and it then comes like that, please follow uh, my pointer, and it then pushed to the diffuser, a drop tube, sorry, it is then pushed to the drop tube, and drop tube collect the water and then in, uh, and pass it to the reservoir. So the volute casing, impaler, and drop tubes complete the vocal systems. Thank you for listening.